you guys are used to the hot weather, but because you're from Miami, but how are you feeling being in Nashville? Um, feels almost the same, to be honest with you. I live in like the coldest city in like the United States, so I'm not doing too well in the heat. I like the cold from Buffalo, New York. I lived in Minneapolis for five years, so I'm used to going outside like 40 degrees in shorts. It's pretty cold. <laughs> All right. Um, well, we're at kind of an interesting point in the industry right now because it's the end of Warp Tour. As a band that kind of came up on Warp Tour, um, how do you guys f feel the industry is going to be affected by it being over? And what do you think needs to happen to kind of fill the gap after it's gone? Um, I think it's definitely weird for this new generation to like not have it but I think it just needs to be basically the same thing different name and like I don't know better <laughs> bands I guess I'm not I'm not really like so fond of all the bands that are that have been on it in the past years um, and yeah I think I think it'll actually give a lot of other new bands like a chance a different kind of chance now that it's not there I don't know sounds kind of weird but I just what do you what do you think I mean like if it's become such a necessity to bands that like newer bands that have like new albums and stuff they're like they're the hype you kind of can almost predict when you're constantly hearing about a band if they were gonna be on warp tour like that band make out that was in everybody's news feed for a while and that band picturesque like you knew that they were going to be on warp just because you wouldn't stop hearing about them but um it's, honestly like i think a lot of people are pretty heartbroken about an ending but at the same time it's definitely cool because one it's ending on a good note it's ending as kevin's still running it um kevin never really like sold out or sold the festival as a lot of people probably would have done in his position so like I definitely respect that. I think that's cool, um, but uh, it definitely is definitely going to change the marketing game and the music industry for sure. And that's going to be really interesting to see how labels adapt to that. But the thing is, with that is, uh, you might see some of these labels who whose in was Warp Tour. That's how they would break their ban. You might see some new labels switch places with them that that calculate the new algorithm to how to break your ban. Uh, and that'll be cool because it'll be cool to kind of see people do different things and you might see bands that you didn't usually see start blowing up. You might see different genres come out yeah. and everything. Um, so it's it's like, I think a lot of people are upset about it, but I think it's at the same time, it's turning a whole new chapter for music and it, it will make it easier for some bands, make it harder for some bands, but it's definitely like a, like a cycle that's cycling yeah. out, so. This is a 10 year anniversary tour. So in all the time of being a band, what is the weirdest thing you've ever seen on a drive? On a drive? Uh, on a drive? I, I mean, I don't know if this is weird, but I woke up split second to us smashing a deer in half. Like I woke up a second before we, hit a deer and it split in half. That's kind of crazy, Which I guess. Which road was that on? I don't remember. To be honest was it in the Suburban? Uh, this, yeah, I think it was in the Suburban. And a, and a Suburban, like, didn't break or anything. <laughs> just just the light. But I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure I've seen weirder. I just can't think of anything. But You've seen some weird stuff. <laughs> I don't even know, man. I've seen some really weird stuff. Uh, I saw a tractor trailer explode in front of me when I was picking up Matt from the airport. And it's actually pretty funny because like, Matt texted me that morning and was like, Nate, no matter what, don't be late. Don't be late. Because I'm always late to picking him up from the airport. Always. It's like, I'm on time. I'm killing it. I'm like, yeah, we're going to get there before his flight's there. Like, this is going to be all good. And literally the tractor trailer in front of me just bursts into flames. And I'm like, all right, well, I need to pull over and like, not like, I was like, we were literally the first people on the scene. So it's like, we had to pull over and help. So we pulled over and helped the guy take the, the trailer off his, he was fine, but the, the trailer was, was on fire. The truck wasn't. So you have to disconnect the trailer from the truck and we helped him do that. But then they decided to close the highway 
before they let us out. So we were stuck there and Matt lands and I'm like, <laughs> Matt's like, where are you guys at? And I go in and I ask the, the fire officer there how long he thought. He's like, it's probably going to be two to three hours. And I was like, Matt, you're not going to believe this. And I sent him a picture of the trailer burning (laughs) (laughs) like that was really funny just because uh just because yeah um what else have we seen we've seen some weird stuff um Uh, i mean not necessarily me but my boy who's not playing with us anymore he's at home killing it but uh he uh he actually like photographs some, like a mothership in Arizona, like crazy ass spacecraft. And I, I'm like a really big fan of aliens and shit. And like he didn't wake me up, so I was really pissed that I didn't see that. But he showed me the pictures, and I think I can confirm that it was actually like some crazy because it was huge. It was like this huge ship in the sky, in the middle of the desert. And yeah, that's I kind of saw that. I guess I was there when it was happening. So one more thing, I'm freaking out. <laughs> I, this is also I was getting Matt. I was dropping Matt off to a flight in New York. <laughs> you know where oh, this man. is going. Do you know where this is going? So uh, everybody's asleep in the van. It's like 6 a.m. and the truck in front of me. We're on the George Washington Bridge in New York City. And the truck in front of me slams on his brakes, and I slam on my brakes. But he started rolling before I did. So. I didn't realize, I didn't even think about it, but the sun was coming out, like, or the sun was rising, so it was, like, really blinding. Like, the sunrises are always blinding on bridges. So it was, like, blinding, and I gassed it, and then I stopped really quickly again. The car behind me slammed on his brakes, but he just got annihilated by a tractor trailer. Like, literally, like, I'm just looking out my rear view, and you just see, like, this little Prius just get squished by this tractor trailer. <laughs> Everybody woke up and was like, what was that? You just see cars just like taking rights and taking lefts. You just, there's just a giant pile up forming behind us. And uh, it was definitely an inadvertent cause. But uh, yeah, but was, what, was, <laughs> what was funny about this? Well, it really isn't funny, but it's kind of funny. But anyway, so we went and dropped them off. We got out completely unscavenged. And so when we came back, um, we were coming back. Our basis, Connor, was routing me. It was like, using his gps he's like nate we made it to google maps it was like the george washington bridge is now closed in the northbound lane <laughs> this was like two hours later too but uh yeah that was interesting <laughs> well yeah you guys are often described as a uh, evil funk band which is would be considered kind of one of the niche genres and in the last few years we've seen an explosion of the niche genres yeah. like art fashion rock and pirate metal have you ever seen any of these niche genres that you thought was just a little too unnecessary uh yeah 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 for some reason a lot of people like associate us with like the crunk core thing but that's only because we did crank that and hxc two stuff yeah it was just those those were not really like songs that we were to be taking like so serious so like i don't know why people like took it so serious I really wish they didn't because it's just like you said it's like kind of like pointless but um I kind of wish like the I kind of wish somebody would do something di- I know there's a lot of other weird genres that like formulated because of this stuff but I wish somebody would do something original today and like I don't know. Nobody's trying to do anything different at all. Everybody just sounds the same to me. Nobody, nobody has done anything that's maybe been like, whoa, like I've never heard this before. So I don't know. I really don't know. I'd like uh, nothing. Nothing. I don't really pay attention to it. If, if that's like to answer your question, like it doesn't really like bother me. But I just wish somebody would do something new, like cool. And yeah, I mean, uh, l- like, there is too much and there isn't too much. But at the same time, like, I give people props for trying something new. Like, the crunk cord thing was, like, kind of crazy. And it's, like, not something that I was really a fan of. But, I mean, it's if 
it was something new. It was a breath of fresh air for people. So, so yeah. Um, I mean, I think that what's cool about us though is like a lot of people can't really put their finger uh, on um, on like what we are, and when we describe it as evil funk. People are like, wait, like they'll like dissect. Like I think one of the things that people don't really pay attention to is like the bass lines. A lot of the bass lines are like really funky type bass lines in the parts. Um, so it's like once you say it and describe it, it kind of makes sense. Um, but uh, a- as towards new genres, uh, I mean, they're on the radio, but that new Foster the People album is pretty sick. <laughs> it's kind of funky, but I I don't know. It's it's just something. Dude, I love Foster the People, dude. I didn't know they were around. Yeah, they got this new song on the radio. I, every time I sing it, everybody thinks I'm singing Led Zeppelin. But, but. All right, well, one last question. You guys over the years have recorded a lot of music videos. Whether it be good or bad, what is your most uh, fond memory from recording a video? Uh, I don't know. I think Things Around with the Orange is probably the funnest. Like, to be honest with you, I don't really like... I'm not a huge fan of music videos. Like, I am. Like, the ones that are, like, crazy budget, you know, like, M83 type shit, that's cool. But, like, sometimes I think it's not necessary to have a video because it kind of, like, ruins how you think of the song. And if if the video isn't, like, up to par to, like, the song, then you, like, start not liking the song as much. So, but I, but Things Around the Orange was, was one of the funnest because it was just, like, different, you know, it was just, it was random, it was, like, the beginning for me, it was new, it was, like, what the hell's going on, why are we doing this, but it works, you know, so, yeah, that was the funnest, but, unless I'm gonna have, like, a crazy Hollywood budget for my next music video, or something that's just, like, executed really well, um, I probably won't even bother doing, doing I don't know. Music videos are like hit or miss for me. Uh, when we filmed my Uzi, uh, there's this awesome burrito place around this corner from Matt's house. It's called Arnesto's. I really, really like Arnesto's. So that was my favorite thing about that <laughs> music video. Um, that was really bizarre. Yeah, Ali, come and say what up. Come and say what up. <laughs> Yo, you can say what up, Elliot. Yo, this is our slash Anna's OK's bus driver, Elliot. How's it going? Sorry. Just heard everybody <laughs> talking. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Arnesto's was really cool. Um, I don't even really... That, move, that music video shoot was, like, just such a... Sh- shit show we really had no idea what we were gonna do uh dude's girlfriend really didn't like me it was really really weird yeah, <laughs> like so weird. it was a really weird few days it was, it was fun in this weird way at the same time it was just kind of stressful um i'm trying to think of what else happened that weekend my boy johnny tiger rolled through to go to Arnesto's, oh and then didn't have his wallet so i bought johnny tiger Arnesto's. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that was the highlight of me filming that video. Yeah, sick. So, do you have any last words? <laughs> any last words for the fans? Just be as original as you can, and if you feel like you're about to give up, just don't give up, and keep going, even though you sound like shit. Just keep on going till it sounds good. Um, drink water, stay hydrated, drink a lot of water, and, uh, go to bed a lot. sleep, get good sleep, and, uh, eat fruits, uh, go for a run every day, it makes you feel better, um, only take Xanax if you're prescribed it, <laughs> no, oh, I was prescribed Xanax, that shit was, that helped, um yeah uh shout out to everybody that's been there to hold it down for us yeah holding it down it's been fun stay hydrated take care of yourselves yeah you should anything to plug 
Anything to plug. Caterpillar Sex 2046. <laughs> Caterpillar Sex coming out someday. We got a song coming out with Little Lotus. Don't know when that shit's coming out. Um, it's done. It's fire. Uh, plug my boy Eli Arbor. Little Skies was good. Little, Little Skies was good. Song already. Alright, PXX. Alright, PXXX Tennessee on. Alright, PX, man. Uh, who else we talking about? Yo, shout out to Trippy Red for never replying to Matt's DMs. Um, shout out to who's been yo, shout out to our boy Landon Castle. I love Friday. And, and I love Friday, shout out. I love and shout out to who else digs us? Shout out to Chef Wes Lieberheber, Hyben Schmitz. And uh, the kid from It's Dad. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Wes. Shout out to our boy Wes. Yeah. Shout out to my boy Cody. Shout out to everybody that held it down. Shout out to Lexa Pro. All right, we got to go to LDs. Shout out to LDs for being Shout open till 10. Where I set my friends on fire. Thanks. Thank you. I'm so sick and tired.